Hello there, my name is Adam, I'm a 3D artist and illustrator, and today I'm going to show you how to make some water. It's going to be a little bit interesting. I just want to mention, the render will end up looking kind of like this, depending on your settings. So, first is first, you're going to want to start by having an object that you can put the water in. So, what we're going to do is just do scale in the z-axis, make this pretty flat. You press 1 to center yourself a little bit on the numpad uh, then we just do edit we do face selection select this face here and we can press i that'll make like a little indent like this i one more time add another little edge like this and then we can just extrude downwards now obviously this has not look completely like a pool so we can just do face selection by selecting this and then just do g x and we can add a little sideline like this now, when it comes to the texturing and stuff that we're going to add to this, I'll show you how to do that right now. Now, before we continue, you're going to have to go over here to add-ons. This will be located in uh, edit, and then you have to click on preferences, and this tab will appear. Once you have this open, you're going to have to click here on add-ons, and then you're going to have to search for node. Go here to node wrangler, and just activate it. That's all you need. If anything else, you're just so, you know, there's no confusion, you can go here to input and turn on emulate three button mouse. Navigation, you can turn on depth if you really want to. That will make it so you can infinitely zoom into an object. And then when it comes to key mapping, turn on tab for pie menu and extra shading pie menu. I usually have those on because it's just useful. Then what you want to search up here is loop. Turn on mesh loop tools. And extra, add mesh extra objects. After you've done all these settings, you can go here and just click on save preferences. All right, so before we get out of edit, we just extrude this upwards a little bit. All right, let's get out of edit mode. We'll select this. We'll go to Material, which is right here. We'll change this to the Shader Editor by clicking on Shader Editor there. Let's go up. We'll select this. Do shift Control t We go to where we have the textures for the tiles. So we're going to be adding a tile texture to everything. All right, we're going to open the gravel one. So let's go right here and we go here. All right, then we're going to select everything. So just select everything and do principal texture setup. And there, that should do everything for you. If you look at it, let's go to this view. It should look something like this for now. We're going to fix that in a bit, don't worry. Then we're going to select this. So now do tab to go into edit mode. Let's do A to select everything. And then let's do U and then do Q projection. And there, that should fix the texturing a little bit because it did look a little bit strange. If we get out of edit mode, it should look like this. Also, just so you know, you can change the scale of this. So if you want, you can go over to here on scale make sure you have a visual of it and you can increase it so that it has a lot more obviously you can increase all of them to the same value so let's just do Control c on this and just paste it on all of these and there you go you'll get like a more like refined texture so before we continue let's do edit let's select this top piece Let's select the side pieces here. So just double click on this little edge here. Double click on this edge here. And this bottom pit there. And let's add another material. Let's do new. And now we're going to add the tiles to this. Let's click on assign. That way it's assigned to that. Once more do shift control T. Now we have to add the other one. And that should give it that texture. Once more, you can scale it up on this well let's do u and let's do cube projection there we go and it should start looking something like this and of course we can leave it like this or we can go over here and do a bevel modifier it'll it should also round off a few of the textures we can increase the bevel segments to a three there we go so get segments shade smooth and if we do control r right here 
should look something like that. Now, another thing that you'll need to add before we add the water in, we're going to have to add an HDR to this. So, to do that, we have to change this from object to world. You'll see it looks like this. And we can just click and drag an HDR of our choice. In my occasion, I'm going to use resting place as the HDR. Shift A, search for texture coordinates. So just scroll down, texture coordinates. We're, we're going to connect color to color. Then we do shift A and search for mapping. There we go. And we connect vector to vector and we connect generate to vector. And if we go into this view, it should be working perfectly. You'll see like a little background. If you look around, it should look like this. Obviously you can rotate it around. I'm going to leave it as is since it really doesn't matter. And if you want to remove this background, it, it's a pretty strange background to have. Render, then you're going to have to go to film and turn on transparency. And that should remove that weird background Mostly what the HDR does is it adds lighting. Another thing you'll have to do is change it from EV to Cycles, and then turn on Denoise right here. And the projects should start like rendering very nicely like this. All right, another thing that I want you to do is add a light, Shift A, light, and let's add a sun. G, move it over to here, rotate it a little. It doesn't really matter, it just needs to be pointing the pool. Let's go to the light here and make it slightly orange so that it has a little orange tinge to it. There we go. And if we go to the render view, it should look something like this. You'll see like a little shadow. You can increase a little tinge of orange in it if you want. So now that we have all this done, there are two ways to make water. And they're not too complicated. The first one isn't complicated at all. For the first one, we have to do Shift A, we go to Mesh, and we get a plane. G Z to move it up. We can scale it in the X axis, scale it in the Y axis, and it'll be like that. Now, what we have to do is go to the wrench here, modifier, and we do ocean modifier. Now you'll see that it'll grow like this, but that doesn't matter. Let's go here to spectrum and we change this to shallow water. Once we have that, let's scale it down so that it's, you know, just about the shape of the pool. Now let's change resolution to 15, change this one to 15 as well. Optionally, you can always do 11 as well, but 15 for me, it looks interesting. Then I guess this would be a two meter pool. Or it's more like three meters of depth. I don't really know. I'll just do three meters. Then we have to go to waves and change this to 0 0.2. That should make everything a little bit more flat. Obviously you can change it around however you want. Uh, it does look a little bit too noisy. You can reduce it to 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Let's see how that looks. I guess that's good enough. Let's leave it at 0 0.1 since it looks the best. And change this to a 37. There you go. After that, I need you to go over to here. Select this object. Go to materials. Add new a new material to this. Change, change it from world to object. There we go. And now try to copy these settings. Increase the specular quite a bit. Reduce the roughness to zero. So no roughness at all. This right now is using the one for glass. The IOR. Uh, the settings for glass. Change it to 1.333. There we go. That's the refraction of water, if you're curious. Change the transmission to max. So just max out the transmission. Then what I want you to do is go over to here and change the base color to a nice blue. I generally go for like a bluish green right about here. There we go. It's always subject to change. You can make it a little bit more blue or a little bit less green but usually that's the color that chlorine takes 
And now, I want you to select this right here, go to Object, go to Shading, and change it to Receive Shadow Caustics. And that'll make this object receive some caustics. Next, I want you to select the water, and I want you to make it cast shadow caustics. Then, I want you to select this light, which is the sun. We can put it a little closer if you want. Go to visibility. Then, I want you to select this light here. You can move it a little closer if you want. I'll leave it there for now. And I want you to click here on light and turn on shadow caustics. After you've done all that, we can just zoom in, go into the render, and it should start looking like water. Now, obviously, if you don't want the water to be at this reflective, you can always go to the material. So let's go over to here. Let's pause it for a few minutes. Or let's go to this view here. And let's reduce the specular a little bit to like about there. And if we look at it now, you'll see that the water is there. Of course, we can just reduce the specular to zero or to whatever setting we want. It'll reflect a little bit from everything. Obviously, you can decrease the intensity of the HDRI. To do that, we have to go here to the shader editor. First, let me pause it for a bit. There you go. And change it from object to world. And change the strength to, let's say, 0 0.2. There we go. That way, this light has a little bit more influence than the HDR. The HDR is mostly for ambient light. So let's see it now. Now, obviously, if you wanted, you can increase the intensity of this light a little bit more. Let's say 3000. Let's say increase it to like about there. And if you think the water isn't too visible, you can always change the color. Right now it's a bit too green. I don't really like it. Let's go to this. Select this. Let's go to the material and change it to be a little bit more blue. Let's look at it now. And once it renders out a little bit, the water should look something like this. Now, this here is just one method of making water. It'll make it look a lot like the usual pool water that you see a lot of the time. Here, let me get another angle. Also, if you want, you can add a secondary light. Let's do Shift A. Light. Spotlight. Let's do 1, G. And we can put it in the same place. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Make sure everything's being affected. Change this light to a little bit of an orange as well. And let's change the strength to uh, 2000. Let's see how that looks. All right, let's turn on the shader right now. Also, make sure that shadow caustics are on with this light. And if we zoom in to about there, let's let it render out. It should start looking a lot like water. Now, if you don't like the waviness that much, you can always go to the modifier over here and just change it around to where you like it. Make it look inwards, almost like this. There we go. And we'll get a little weird effect like this. You'll see a little bit of the tiles underneath. The caustics are affecting it quite a bit. And I don't know, I, I feel like I like this a little bit. You can just change this resolution around, like maybe let's try out something, I don't know, like five. Let's see how that looks. The more you reduce this number, the more um, flat the water will be, or rather the less noisier it is. So right here, this is the least noisiest you can get it. To where it still looks like water but it's still like you know affecting it quite a bit you can increase this slightly let's say i want it to be eight there we go that way it still looks like water it's still a little ripply but we can still see the tiles i don't know it just fully depends on you on how you want your water to look you can change the little resolution here to whatever number you want Usually, you know, 
you don't want it to be that wavy. I usually leave it at like somewhere around 15 because then it's noisy enough to where it looks like water or like very active water. But you can still kind of see the tiles below. Now let's do shift A, mesh, cube, scale this down, scale it in the Z axis, G, Z, and make sure it's touching the bottom. Edit, face selection, G, Z, make it go up, select these faces here, G, X, make sure it's just about touching the edge. If you want, you can make it go past the edges. All right, and now what we have to do with this is go into the shader editor, change it from world to object. Let's add a new material to this. Scroll in, change it from principal BSDF to a glass one. There we go. Now it's a glass BSDF. Then I want you to do shift A and search for a transparent BSDF. Do Shift A again, search for a mix shader. Let's place that one right there, and let's place this one here. Then do Shift A, search for light path. Let's place that over here. Connect shadow ray to this. There we go. Let's leave that around there. We can move these around so that they're not keeping stuff neat. Then do Shift A, search for a bump map. There we go. Connect the normals to the normal here. Shift A. Search for a noise texture. There we go. Connect this to normals. Or rather, not normals, to high. There we go. Or height. Do Shift A. Search for add shader. Let's place it right here. Connect this to volume. Shift A. Search for a principal BSDF, connect this to the top one, then, here, let me adjust these so that they're not like that, shift A, search for a volume, absorption, connect this to this, let's move these a little, there we go, and that should be the full setup for this water at least. Next, I want you to change the color to something like this. So let's select the base color here. Change it to a blue, like around there. I also want you to change the emission strength to 0 0.1. And put this like around here and change the color to about there. And you can change the color here as well. Make it like a little light color like that. For the density, I genuinely like 0 0.2. Though 0 0.1 is okay. Next, I want you to reduce the roughness a little bit. Maybe to like about there. The strength to about here. And the scale to, to 50. If that's a bit much, because you'll notice that 50 affects it like this. You can just reduce it to whatever scale suits it best. Just keep scaling it until it looks good personally when it comes to these pools i'll leave it around there now i'll point out a few things in case you want to modify everything to make the water look how you want it to look genuinely this right here would be the texture of the water or the roughness of the waves then this over here is how flat the water will be so the height rather these all affect the color so this one this one and this one affects the color of the water and this one affects the clarity of the water so however clear you want the water you change the density and then that should be everything for this water it really doesn't need any more setup than that and there we go we have some water personally i think it looks really nice it's really clear. Like I said before, if you really wanted to, let me select this, you can increase the color of it. 
or rather the density of it. So right now it's pretty clear and let's look at it like this. Now I personally like this type of water the best when it comes to bigger projects. Though in general I like this water because it has a little bit of depth to it. When you render it out it looks okay in the most part. But you also have the option of this one right here and the modifier that it has on it. So if you ever just want to modify this one, you can go to the modifier, change the resolution to 11 or something like that, or reduce it even further just so the bottom of the pool is more visible. So right here you'll see that the pool is more visible. So once you're ready to render, just go here to render and change this number to 300. Now before we press F12 to render, you're going to have to delete one of them. So right now we have this one invisible and the other one visible. So real quick, if we just make this one visible, you'll see the water looks like that. And if we remove it and place this one, the water should look like that. But if you were to press F12 right now, it would look nothing like this. The water would look murky, it wouldn't look good. So before you do anything, you're going to have to choose one for example, I want this one, and you're going to have to delete the other one. So let me just select this and delete that one. So I'm going to select this, make it visible, right click, click on select, and then just delete it. And there we go. Now you can press F12, and it should start rendering with those water settings that you had. The render should start going off looking like this. Anyways, before I end the video, I wanted to just mention, you don't really need two lights, especially for the water. Otherwise, it would look kind of like this. And not that that looks bad, it does look interesting, but it's a bit too many caustics. That's usually how it looks when it has too many light sources. So let me quickly just hide this, and you'll see that the water is a lot more clearer. So if you just remove one of the lights, it should look a little better, and it should look a little more clearer. And it solely depends on the angle that you look at it. For example, if I go to my camera view, it should look something like this. Anyways, my name is Adam, and I hope you can make some cool water just like this. I'd like to say that you can visit training.mammothinteractive.com and enroll in this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MAMMOTH to enroll for free.